I've put another VFET power amp to test. This time, it's this Victor JMS7. You may not know the name Victor, which is a Japanese company, on its full name is Japan Victor Company, known as JVC in the rest of the world. Victor is one of the very few companies that utilized VFET transistors in their amplifiers. Well, in this case, I should use singular, Victor made just one. On as it often was with Japanese, she was of course made only for Japanese market, and the name Victor on our JVC. Unlike Yamaha or Sony, Victor didn't use its own transistors, but rather ones made by an EC. I've tested one of the Yamaha's VFET power amps B3 about a month ago, and it's a brilliant amp, one of the best out there. And since the B3 is so good and also utilizes VFET transistors, I've got no choice but to compare these two. And since they're using similar transistors, they should also sound very similar. Unlike the B3, which is pure a class A B amp, JMS7 is kind of class A. Why kind of, you ask? Well, she kind of works in both classes, depending on the volume level. She works in class AB in idle and very low volumes, which saves energy. Then she switches to class A in mid volumes, which doesn't save any, but it makes the most out of the transistors in the most important volume levels, and then again switches back to class AB in higher volumes. It's a pretty clever design. Since the JMS7 is a power amp, she in it is a preamp, and even though Victor has released many preamps, they've decided to make one tailored especially for the JMS7. And so, Victor came out with this preamp, JPS7. I'm not gonna use it for this review, because I want to test the power amp without any additional interference. I will, however, make a separate video. As it usually is with the old Japanese electronics, there is no information whatsoever about them online, or not even JVC couldn't or wouldn't help me, saying that they have no information about that anymore. All I could find out was the price in 1975, which was 230,000 yen. That wasn't exactly cheap, it was a iron product after all. But she didn't sell very well, and that may be an overstatement. It was a disaster. And that's the reason why she's the rarest amplifier of the VFAT family today. And that's it about this story. Let's have a look at the specs. Power output is 110 watts per channel into 8 ohms which is more than enough for me and should be for any ohm user, unless you have deaf. Distortion at maximum power output is 0.03 and since the amp operates in mid-volumes in class A, the distortion at mid-volumes is a little bit lower, which is 0.02%. It's not a huge improvement, but it's there. I doubt anybody could actually hear the difference. I certainly can't. Frequency response is pretty good too. It ranges from 7Hz up to 80kHz. She's got a very unusual design and very good build quality. Unusual, yeah, but I kinda like it. These two 22,000 microfarads main caps are not inside the chassis as they usually is, but rather outside in their glory, as well as the massive toroidal transformer. The rest of the electronics is in the body itself, on under this cover. I never understood why there are headphone jacks on these iron tabs. It's like putting a laser sight on a minigun. But if you want to use headphones, yeah, you certainly can. The power switch is located right above the power on indicator light on this little panel here. Just press the button and after the two relay clicks, you're ready to go. You can connect either one or two pairs of speakers and enable each of them with these two buttons. Speaker terminals are located as usual on the back of the amp right next to the power cord on another kind of useless feature, this power socket. Since the outlet is unswitched, it's only useful if you don't have enough wall circuits around. On the other side from here are these two RCA inputs. There's nothing special about them of course, but right next to them are these little volume attenuators. They need a screwdriver to turn, and for a good reason. You shouldn't touch that shit on the power amp. Any additional port between sound source and the speakers is pretty much unwanted, because there is a very good chance it will worsen the sound. For managing volume, you usually want to connect a preamp, but if you want to connect your sound source directly, and your source doesn't have any volume control, these may come in handy. Another thing you'd need a preamp for is loss of inputs and outputs, because the JMS7 is a power amp, it's got only one input. But if you've got only one sound source, you certainly don't need a preamp. Unless you've got a turntable without integrated preamp, in that case you'd need one. Taking off this cover reveals the most important part of this amp, these VFET transistors. 
VFAT, also called SIT transistors, have very similar characteristics to triodes, compared to other transistors. And if you ever heard any valve amp, you can be certain this one is gonna sound bloody awesome. There are not that many companies that implemented VFAT in their amplifiers. It was Yamaha, Sony, Sansui, Hitachi, and of course Victor. Unfortunately, all of these amps were discontinued very early, mainly because of very high production cost. VFATs are known for being a bit warmer, well, they can get quite hot, and that's why Victor stuck him to this big ass heating. They should keep the transistors cool, cooler. There is of course a protection circuit, they should protect the amp from overheating. When the temperature exceeds 85 degrees Celsius, which is 185 degrees Fahrenheit, the power is cut off. Unlike Sony or Yamaha, which use their own VFAT transistors, Victor used transistors manufactured by NEC, and I wonder how it compares to Yamaha's or Sony's VFAT. Well, since I've got only Yamaha amp, it's gotta be the B3. It's no big surprise, but it sounds very similar to the Yamaha's B3. The sound is very detailed, it's got very nice on the bass, imaging is perfect and it's very clear. However, even though it's very similar to the B3, the sound is a bit dry and also musical compared to the B3. I'm not sure if it's just me, but the spoken word sounds a bit weird. Well, not exactly weird, but a bit unclear or veiled compared to the B3. Since I'm still using the amp while making this video, I can hear the difference. I'm not saying it's rubbish, far from it, it's a cracking little device, it's just not as good as the B3, but certainly better than almost anything manufactured today. She didn't have any problems driving either Yamaha NS1000Ms or JBL HP5AEs. NS1000 sound very neutral on their own, on this amp made them sound a bit warmer and a bit nicer to listen to. On the other hand, JBLs are a lot bassy, especially with Yamaha's B3s. And again, when I'm comparing these two, Victor likes a build bass, but it's still got more bass than for example Yamaha CA2000. This piece of electronics is very, very rare, and there are not too many units left, let alone working units. She needs to be taken care of and cherished. And when she's properly serviced, she's gonna work, and she's gonna work perfectly for many years to come. The problem is that the VFAT transistors are no longer being produced, so if any of them die, you've got a very slim chance of getting a replacement. So, if you're not afraid there's something like that happens one day, go get it, it's certainly worth it, if you find one that is. And that's it for this review, see you all next time.